Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam doktor. Ah, okey ya, boleh dengar ya. So, yang kontak saya tu Syah Al-Hadi ya, bukan? Ah, yes. Ya. Hadi. Ah, okey. Ha. So, hari ini PBS tu okey, three topics kan, ada. Right? Presenter siapa je? Who are the presenters? Uh, I'm the first presenter. Uh, siapa ni? Sa'al Hadi ya? Yeah. Okay, yang ada Fadnopati. And then hypertension siapa? Ni, Hadi. Okay lah, tambah nanti nanti yang third. Fadnya Saleha. Okay, alright. Okay, um... Uh, you all tak ni ya? Tak send to my email ya? The slides ni. Uh, tak hantar. Okay, nanti after this you can send to my email. Okay. Dah tahu email saya? Belum. Okay, I hope I give you in the chat ya. Okay. Alright. So send. Okay, so... Dah start with umur kitab Al-Fatihah. Still 23 kan? 24 with me. Ada few yang tak join lagi. Tak apalah. So appreciate um, those who come on time kan we join on time so we start lah okay Syah Al-Hadi dulu Syah Al-Hadi ni ini kan you are repeaters kan bukan ah, ya, ya. ah, ya. tahun lepas dah masuk page posting kan ya Hello, ah. yeah, betul last year you did the page posting ah, ya. as well kan Ah, yes, hmm. apa present different topic mm -hmm. or same topic? Sorry? Ah, uh, different. Oh, different. Okay, so you can learn uh, more. Different. Ah, okay. But actually, the topic is similar with last year, kan? You last year pun dah get some idea uh, from yeah. your friends punya presentation, kan? Okay, should be okay. Alright. So just uh, start. Uh, so, Assalamualaikum uh, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone. Uh, so, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. So, alright. Uh, uh, please tell uh, if the uh, voice uh, is low or something. I think my mic is a uh, problem a bit. So, uh, I'm the first presenter. Uh, my name is Shah Hadi. I'm going to explain about uh, this topic about uh, child with this adenopathy. Lah. So, Um, next, uh, um, uh, these are the content of my presentation for today, uh, which include the uh, definition of uh, lymph adenopathy, uh, what causes it, uh, and how to approach children with uh, lymph adenopathy. And last but not least, is how we manage, manage uh, this patient, uh, which consists of investigation and also uh, treatment. Alright, uh, so uh, first is introduction. So, this is uh, basically as you can see on the Uh, image on the right side right now. This, uh, this how our image looks like under the uh, microscope. Uh, and then uh, uh, we can see it, it is composed of these uh, small follicles and there is a, a, a lot of lymphocytes in it. And then uh, as we could recall, uh, uh, the function of the node uh, includes uh, to transport uh, excess fluid and lymph from the, the body tissue. Uh, as well as uh, for absorption and transportation of fat uh, and also to produce immune cells. So, uh, uh, the pathophysiology of uh, how this uh, leaf uh, nodules can go into uh, problems is uh, is by proliferation of this normal lymphoid element or it can be infiltrated by uh, malignant cells of this phagocytic cell. Uh, And then uh, most students can have these palpable lymph nodes until about 8 to 12 years old. How, uh, however, once they reach the uh, puberty age, then they can then this lymph node will go at the trophy. 
Okay, uh, next slide. So this definition uh, by the Nelson Pediatric Division, making uh, strategy the second edition. So lymph adenopathy basically is the presence of uh, more one or more enlarged lymph nodes, uh, measuring more than one centimeter uh, in diameter for the uh, axillary and cervical lymph nodes. Uh, as for inguinal lymph nodes, uh, it is more than 1.5 centimeter, and for the epitoclear lymph nodes, it is more than 0 0.5 centimeter. And then uh, we look uh, at another definition. Uh, okay, this uh, by the Nelson Essential 7, 7 edition, which define lymph nodopathy as the enlargement uh, of the lymph nodes basically because of uh, uh, either infection, inflammation, or malignant process. So uh, next we'll go into the causes uh, of lymph nodopathy. Uh, so here I listed there are about uh, five. Uh, basically, the first one is uh, reactive lymph nodopathy, which is a normal function of the lymph node itself uh, when there is infection. Then uh, we, uh, we, it will undergo uh, this uh, process of hyperplasia. And then secondly is lymph adenitis, which is uh, an inflammatory response to infection. Uh, which uh, and uh, each of the uh, each of the etiology I'm going to explain later uh, in the next part of my presentation. And then the third one is malignancy. Uh, the fourth one is uh, a rare disease, uh, which is a uh, Neiman Pick disease. Um, basically, when the function of the um, lymph, uh, lymph node, which is uh, to transport fat. Uh, however, in this disease, there is this uh, accumulation of this fingomyelin. Which, uh, this disease is rare. Lah. And then last one is the drug related, which is uh, lymph related to the side effect of certain medication. Uh, like uh, isoniazide and so on, which I will explain after this. Okay, so next slide. So uh, we can classify uh, lymph adenopathy uh, into two. So first one is generalized, and second is localized or regional, uh, regional uh, lymph adenopathy. So general, generalized uh, means that there is an enlargement of two or more non contiguous lymph node groups. Basically, non contiguous means like these lymph nodes are, are not uh, like uh, near to each other and not uh, touching each other. For example, like uh, involving the uh, axillary lymph node and also the inguinal lymph node, which are quite far from one another. And it's, uh, this generalized lymph nodopathy is usually caused by a more system disease. And usually, uh, they are, they are uh, the presence of other abnormal findings uh, in the uh, physical examination. And then um, for localized, uh, then uh, it's deeper from generalized because it uh, only have a enlargement of single node or multiple contiguous leaf node, which leaf node that are near and um, are near to one another. And uh, most frequently, uh, localized or generalized uh, lymphadenopathy is caused by infection uh, of the node and at its drainage area. So uh, we look uh, at the uh, side of the lymph node and where it, uh, it drains from. For example, like if there is uh, infection in, uh, in the area of the head, neck, or oropharynx, then it will drain into the cervical uh, lymph node. And then uh, on the third column, we can see the common causes of cervical uh, uh, lymph node uh, enlargement, uh, lipodiopathy at the cervical lymph node. Uh, for example, like uh, in acute, uh, then it can be caused by viral uh, upper respiratory infection, lymphadenitis, and other less common cause like Kawasaki disease. All right. Uh, and then uh, next slide. And uh, the other is also the same. Uh, it's explaining about uh, the lymph nodes and also the area that uh, the drainage area. And then also uh, the third and fourth column is basically be about uh, common causes of um, problems in that uh, lymph node and also on the last column is the less common uh, problem related to that uh, lymph node. All right, uh, next slide. So I'm, I'm going to like uh, explain uh, a few uh, of the causes of the lymph node. Uh, so this one is uh, tuberculosis lymph adenitis, which, uh, which is basically in uh, is an uh, isolated uh, tuberculosis uh, lymph 
Cuba collective adenopathy or that occur due to the activation of the disease at the site uh, that is seeded hematogenously during primary TB infection. So uh, it's usually uh, manifested as uh, the lymph node will be uh, presented as uh, chronic uh, and non-tender lymph adenopathy. Uh, and the site is usually involved the spiker and supracurricular lymph nodes. Uh, other than that, uh, it can be also uh, fixed to the surrounding structure and then the overlying skin can be inflamed or indurated. Uh, usually this one is the uh, as the uh, regionalized or local, localized lymph adenopathy yeah? because uh, there is no other systemic symptom. Uh, uh, this other systemic symptom are not common. So how to diagnose this is you need to take a fine needle uh, exploration cytology and additional biopsy. So uh, from the image, uh, we can see uh, in pediatric uh, patient uh, there on the 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 kid with the red shirt. Um, you can see that uh, that one is the uh, cervical lymph uh, enlargement, and then um, also on the uh, on the right side of the picture. Right, next slide. Okay, uh, so uh, second disease that I'm going to touch about is about uh, cat stress disease. Uh, is caused by, by uh, this uh, gram negative bacillus, which is called Bartonella hensley. So the uh, disease will occur after uh, a person has been uh, infected by pets, uh, usually a uh, kitten, and they inoculate this uh, gram negative bacilli into our uh, to us uh, the host and enter the bloodstream. And then, uh, as you can see on the diagram on the right side, um, the uh, earliest manifestation of this uh, disease usually the patient that have uh, this um, uh, uh, papule at the side of the trauma usually within one week, and then after one uh, after one week, then the patient can develop um, uh, lymph ad uh, lymph adenitis, which are usually regional. Uh, and as you can see in the picture, it is uh, occur at the auxiliary uh, lymph node. Uh, however, uh, the site of this uh, lymph node involvement depends on the area that is uh, scratched by the cat. Lah, for example, if it's um, let's say uh, it's a lower limb, then it will involve the lymph node at that area. And then it can also be associated with other symptoms like low grade fever and malaise. And um, in some individuals, uh, the organism uh, can spread into the system and uh, infect the other organ like liver, spleen, and also eye. All right, uh, next slide. <coughs> All right, uh, so next uh, we'll go into Kawasaki disease. Uh, so basically, Kawasaki disease is uh, what we call as the hyper, um, the, when the immune uh, they, when the this occur when the immune, our immune system uh, hyper reacts to a certain uh, trigger like infection. So what happens in Kawasaki disease is there is this uh, vasculitis of the small or medium uh, sized vessel. So uh, how to diagnose it? We need uh, five or more consecutive days of high grade fever, and at least four of the following condition, uh, which we uh, could uh, enable by this mnemonic of cream. So uh, we need to have four out of five. So the first one is uh, non exudative conjunctivitis, uh, which, uh, which is uh, conjunctivitis without uh, any discharge. Uh, and then rash, uh, usually we see the maculopapular rash. And then edema or erythema, uh, like the oral mucosa erythema, adenopathy, uh, usually involve the cervical region. Uh, typically, it is presented as single and large. Uh, however, this uh, the lymph node enlargement is not usually persist persistent. Lah. And then uh, last one only is uh, mucosal chain, uh, which is the strawberry tongue. As you can see on the picture on the right side, uh, on the top picture that is the strawberry tongue. And then um, uh, and the picture of this finger is uh, periungual uh, disquamation, uh, uh, non exudative conjunctivitis, macular uh, and also uh, oral mucosa erythema. 
All right, next slide. All right, and then uh, we'll go into this more systemic infection. So first one is uh, infectious mononucleosis, uh, which is caused by this uh, EBV infection, uh, Epstein virus infection. Uh, the uh, this disease is transmitted through oral contact uh, with droplet or saliva. Uh, it is also caused as this disease due to uh, this uh, how it is transmitted. Lah. And then uh, the lymph nodes involved is usually at the cervical region uh, and, uh, and often uh, uh, includes uh, the uh, diffuse lymphadenopathy elsewhere. And the nodes is uh, usually firm and uh, firm and tender. Uh, and then uh, it can also have other symptoms like fever, malaise, and uh, a more severe form of uh, tosolitis and pharyngitis. On physical examination, we could see uh, this uh, CTK on the small, on the soft palate, which uh, we can see on the image that I've provided there. And then uh, the patient could also have uh, organomegaly, which involves limo and hepatomegaly. And then other maculopopularis and also jaundice. And then uh, for cytomegalovirus, uh, is mode of transmission is similar. However, uh, it can transmit through saliva, genital secretion, or breast milk. It can rarely be transplacental. Uh, it can rarely be uh, transmitted through tra transplacental or vertical transmission, uh, blood products, and also organ transplant. And then it can uh, cause this mononucleosis like syndrome. However, this as compared to previously, uh, the pharyngitis and lymphadenopathy is not as um, uh, it's not as uh, prominent or, or uh, as bad as in EBV infection. So the, uh, the symptoms you can see is similar. Uh, however, uh, there is other symptoms like headache, abdominal pain with diarrhea, atralgia, and rash. Alright, uh, next. Okay, uh, and then uh, is uh, the HIV infection usually. Um, uh, a proportion of HIV infected infant uh, will progress rapidly to AIDS in the first year of life and then some can remain asymptomatic for months or years before progressing to clinical disease. So the presentation of patient with uh, HIV uh, is uh, varies uh, and uh, according to the degree of uh, their immunocompromised state. So for mild, moderate and severe they have different uh, presentation like uh, in more severe uh, HIV uh, or AIDS infection, they can have uh, opportunistic, opportun opportunistic infection, uh, se severe growth uh, altering also encephalopathy. And then uh, just uh, side note, uh, and then just a side note there, uh, certain uh, with persistent leaf adenopathy, uh, organomegaly, recurrent fever and paraphyl swelling, with uh, thrombocytopenia and recurrent unusual infection uh, should be tested for HIV. Okay. Uh, okay. This is another one of the cause for lymphadenopathy, which is malignancy. This uh, covered about lymphoma and also a bit about leukemia. So for skin lymphoma, as we all uh, know, uh, the lymphadenopathy uh, is usually painless and firm lymph node because uh, yeah, in malignancy, the lymph node is usually uh, non-painful. Then it um, usually involves the cervical, sympathomicular, axillary, and inguinal, and also mildestinal lymph nodes. And then uh, we know the other symptoms include the B symptoms like loss of weight, uh, fever, and also night sweat. And then there are also, there are also other extranodal involvement like uh, sepatosphenomegaly, uh, bone pain, and also symptoms of uh, superior venous cover obstruction like uh, congestion, congestion of the face, and then uh, Horner syndrome. All right. Uh, and then uh, non Hodgkin lymphoma is uh, also uh, similar uh, similar to Hodgkin lymphoma. However, in pediatric patient, uh, non Hodgkin lymphoma is more common compared to Hodgkin. And non Hodgkin lymphoma usually occur uh, uh, at the this area, so particular cervical and and also as an area uh, lymph nodes. Right. 
as for leukemia. Um, so uh, we know that there is uh, leukemia is basically there is uh, abnormal white cells that can be found in the peripheral blood stream. So um, usually uh, in this patient they can have uh, gener generalized leukemiopathy uh, present at diagnosis. Uh, uh, usually a two third of children with uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And one third is uh, acute uh, myeloblastic leukemia. So the symptoms basically uh, occur due to, uh, for example, in bone marrow failure. Uh, the patient can have uh, symptoms like uh, fellow, lethargy, and also easy bruising, bleeding tendency, recurrent infection, uh, and uh, also include uh, organomegaly and lymphadenopathy. Okay, next slide. And then there is uh, this uh, drug related with endopathy. Usually uh, it occurs due to the side effect of uh, drug that is given to the patient, for example, like uh, phenytoin, which is, which is an anti epileptic drug, uh, aloporinol, and also um, isolated for um, anti tuberculosis, anti TB. And then uh, the patient can have generalized lymphadenopathy after weeks of, uh, after weeks, uh, of restarting the drug. So, and then that, uh, that lymphadenopathy can be associated with other symptoms like musculopopular rash, uh, hepatosplenomegaly, fever, zombies, and anemia. And usually after we continue the drug and we uh, stop, stop giving the drug to the patient, uh, the symptom will subside after two to, two to three months. Okay, uh, next uh, I will explain about uh, the approach to the uh, for a child with lymphadenopathy. So first, of course, we need to take uh, a good history from this patient. So uh, under the screen of presenting illness, we need to know uh, where the site of the uh, lymph node that is involved, when is the onset acute, subacute or chronic, uh, acute less than two weeks, subacute uh, between two to six weeks, and then chronic more than six weeks. And then character, uh, character of the uh, if the patient uh, complains of there is uh, like mass uh, or abnormal uh, uh, mass lah. Uh, so we, know, we need to know the location either is localized or generalized and then the progression if the, uh, if the mass too, if, uh, it is increasing in size or if there is any overlying skin changes also we need to ask about the surface uh, uh, we, uh, we need to uh, Ask about any associated pain, also uh, if there is any puncture or discharge from that uh, mask. And then uh, we can also ask for any associated infection, like uh, if there is any like uh, skin uh, abrasion or trauma that can, that can lead to skin infection, any history of sick contact uh, with uh, patient with uh, TB, any previous history of uh, Maybe family history of uh, family history with HIV or uh, uh, and then um, we need to also uh, look for your, this uh, red flags of malignancy lah. And then uh, the aim uh, of history taking is basically we need to look for this provisional uh, diagnosis. Uh, so we need to consider other uh, other differential lah, which include the branchial cyst or other benign tumor like. Uh, Pyrogrosal cysts and so on. Also, uh, we need to rule out the diagnosis and then we need to differentiate be uh, between uh, a significant and non significant history. And then from this data, we can also look for complication of uh, of this uh, different problem, which can include hoarse, hoarseness of voice, rhydor, symptom of. Uh, SBCO, so uh, superior, superior venous cover obstruction, uh, which occur usually due to like, uh, can be due to lymphoma, and then uh, the prolonged vomiting or early satiety, which usually presented with uh, lymphadenopathy at the abdominal region. Alright, next slide. Uh, so here are the findings uh, that we should. Um, uh, finally, that we should expect uh, in patients that uh, we suspect uh, 
uh, have malignant, malignant C. So the patient uh, usually uh, will have suprachotonic node or what we call a virtual node. And then the lymph node can be high or rubbery inconsistency. And then there is no uh, there is no evidence of infection. Uh, and then the fever is uh, for more than more than one week. However, it's un unexplained. Other symptoms like uh, B symptoms like sweat, weight loss, you know, and also fever. Uh, mediastinal widening on sex X-ray, hepatitis cinematically, and abnormal uh, lab result, which uh, which suggests as uh, that it is leukemia or lymphoma. Okay, uh, and then uh, we should ask other history like past medical history. And then, uh, past medical history, like, uh, this, if this patient has any, uh, have, uh, if this patient is, um, for example, uh, taking uh, steroids or uh, previous history of chemotherapy or uh, anything that can uh, predispose to uh, immuno, immunodeficiency because uh, the patient can, uh, can uh, have a potential infection. And then we need to ask about drug history because, uh, as I mentioned, before, they can, uh, there are certain drugs that can lead to lymph adenopathy. And then uh, family history, uh, history of sick contact, uh, which um, is uh, this kind of infection, as I uh, mentioned in the slide. For example, like TB, uh, group A, uh, hemorrhagic prep, or mononucleosis, infectious mononucleosis. And then we ask about uh, Birth history, travel history, and also feeding history, uh, any consumption of infected foods, social history, uh, ask about the social, social uh, economic status of, uh, of the family. Yeah. All right. And then uh, on physical examination, uh, we examine uh, to see if there is any. Uh, Evidence of uh, ecchymosis, uh, as we usually see in leukemia patient, and then uh, in Kawasaki disease, macular popular rash, and also uh, localized lesion uh, in disease like uh, cat scratch disease, staph aureus, and also group A strep, and also uh, HFV infection. Uh, as you can see, the, on the right side of the text, so I uh, provided a picture of. Uh, Purpura, TPP, and also ecchymosis. Ecchymosis E is usually a larger form of uh, purpura. And then body weight, uh, the patient can have a uh, loss of weight, uh, a significant loss of weight of more than 10%, uh, which suggests malignancy. And also, we should uh, also uh, inspect the uh, inspect this patient from head to toe, for example, to look for scalp infection. Uh, which, uh, which can be caused by tinea capitis, conjunctival injection in case of Kawasaki and leptospirosis, and then uh, pharyngitis uh, in upper respiratory tract infection, and also strawberry tongue and periangular disformation, and also last one of these is dental problems. And then uh, on respiratory examination, we should uh, look for features of TB like. Um, on percussion, uh, the patient can have uh, dullness on percussion. Uh, they can have increase in tactile vocal resonance or increase in tactile vocal parameters or, and also vocal uh, resonance. And, and the patient can also have um, bronchial breast sound on observation. As for the abdomen, um, look for hepatitis B normally in. Uh, EBV, CMV, HIV, and syphilis infection, and also any other type of mass like in neural All right. Uh, so, uh, so the examination of the lymph node basically follow the lump and bump examination, uh, just like in surgery post in uh, year three. Uh, so it involves the six S, uh, which is the size, size, shape, surface, scar, and skin changes, and the three T's. Uh, temperature, tenderness, and trans elimination. If we have transformation uh, positive, which means if the mass is cystic or uh, filled with uh, clear fluid. And then campfire, uh, uh, which is basically con uh, the consistency of the mass, compressibility, attachment, 
facility, fluctuation, reducibility, resonance, uh, any other regional leaf node, and also the age of the node. Okay. All right. Uh, next slide. So for uh, location of the leaf node, uh, so we need to uh, see if it's uh, truly localized or if it's involved uh, a general, more generalized involvement of leaf node, and then. For the size, uh, as I mentioned in the definition just now, we need to make sure that it's more than one centimeter in the uh, cervical or auxiliary, uh, more than 0 0.5 in the epitrochlear, which is the uh, if not uh, medium to our uh, ulna region, and then more than 1.5 centimeter in the uh, inguinal lymph nodes. And then consistency, uh, uh, you can see there is a function of the uh, Mesh and also the drainage, then possibly it can be due to bacterial, uh, bacterial causes. And if it's hard, uh, basically suggests uh, cancer or previous inflammation. And if it's firm uh, and rubbery, um, uh, we should think of lymphoma and also chronic leukemia. As for fixation, uh, usually uh, in a normal uh, like uh, as mentioned now, the 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 lymph node can Persist until 8 to 12 years old. If it's normal, then um, usually it's free, freely movable. And then uh, if it sticks to the adjacent tissue like the skin or underlying muscle, then you should suspect uh, malignancy or inflammation of the surrounding tissue. And then tenderness, uh, usually due to infection and inflammation. And uh, as we all know, malignancy usually is uh, not painful and non tender. So uh, we should think of that. Right. And then uh, investigation includes. Uh, Full blood count. Uh, first one is uh, you need to look for the white cell count and the predominant cell is infection caused by bacterial cause. Then neutrophils should be increased. Uh, as, uh, as for the vitamin cause, uh, then we should suspect uh, lymphocytes to be increased. And then uh, 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 we should also uh, look for maybe uh, evidence of pancytopenia in malignancy, like in. Uh, AM, AM, uh, uh, in leukemia also, uh, or, and also lymphoma. And then uh, this um, ESR and also C uh, reactive protein uh, can be increased due to inflammation. And then we should also send for viral uh, tickers like CMV, uh, CMV, uh, Epstein-Barr virus, uh, HIV viral load, and also to, uh, also plasmosis. And then, uh, the part one is uh, anti streptolysin or ticker, uh, which will usually be raised uh, due to uh, infection of group A uh, beta hemolytic uh, streptococcus, like UV, what we call as uh, strep pyogenes, which can cause uh, pharyngitis. And then uh, we should also, also measure for this uh, Bartonella hensley ticker if we suspect for cat stress disease. And then serum, we should, we should also send for serum uh, lactate dehydrogenase. Uh, in case of leukemia and lymphoma, uh, because there is a high uh, high cell turn, high cell turnover in this uh, disease, so we suspect this area should increase. And then uh, for TB, uh, we should stand for uh, TB workout, which include a tuberculin skin test. And then uh, that one is for lab, lab investigation. And then uh, we look for another uh, more invasive investigation, which include the lymph node assay. Biopsy or final activation psychology. Uh, so, uh, if we suspect malignancy on and also TB lymph adenitis, malignancy like uh, lymphoma, so we need to take a uh, uh, sample or uh, biopsy from the uh, lymph node. And then uh, another invasive uh, procedure that is the bone marrow aspiration, uh, bone marrow aspiration uh, psychology. And then last but not least is. Uh, not last, I think uh, that is uh, imaging, which into the uh, chest x ray. And then ultrasound, and also CT, thorax, abdomen, and pelvis. Uh, we split uh, CT, TAP to look for if, uh, the match. Has, uh, if the if this uh, magnesium has involved other organ or have metastasize to other uh, other organs. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, uh, this is the last slide. So, 
you look at the management uh, so basically uh, most of um, cases of uh, leaf adenopathy in pediatric children uh, usually are conservative and can regress within two to three weeks and we should, we should firstly identify if there is any presence of red flag uh, in, in this uh, patient so uh, if the cause is mainly by by or due to bacterial infection so the the rightful uh, treatment is basically to give antibiotics so we can give a uh, two-week trial of uh, beta lactam or broad spectrum antibiotics therapy like uh, augmentin and then um, we reevaluate uh, the children in uh, two to four weeks time uh, and then uh, if after we re uh, reevaluate re re uh, this patient too maybe if the leaf not uh, does not regress or it uh, progress to become bigger then we must think of, uh, that this is not caused by infection so we need a biopsy and then uh, if the cause is uh, basically abscess after we do investigation then we found out like at last time we found out that this abscess so we should do nutrition and drainage as for uh, HIV patient we should uh, start on highly active uh, antiretroviral therapy for malignancy start with uh, chemotherapy uh, or radiotherapy in patients with uh, lymphoma and also leukemia and then specific treatment for underlying causes uh, for example like uh, <coughs> as I mentioned previously uh, like TB lymphadenitis we can start with uh, anti-TB medication um, so for cat stress disease basically if uh, cat stress is caused by gram-negative bacillus so we give antibiotic uh, that is specific to that uh, or gram negative uh, organism like uh, azithromycin and then for Kawasaki disease uh, as you all know uh, we, we need to start treatment with uh, IV IV in the first uh, in the first 10 days of uh, infection all right I think uh, and also um, the, the the problem is caused by the side effect of the drug then we should uh, stop uh, stop the drug immediately I think that's all from me um, is there any question? Alright, so oh, berapa saat tadi ni? Saya ni banyak sangat. Alright, later you apa? You also share ya yeah, to your friends so you all of you can uh, apa namanya refresh and uh, review again the apa the, the, the slides tu. Itulah. Uh, in in short, uh, case of lymphadenopathy ini is common, yeah? and then it, it is only a symptom related to uh, so many possibility of the diseases. Uh, but apa, the common one of of course the infection, uh, American C, but also some others too, maybe part of the systemic uh, autoimmune diseases. Yeah? Uh, so. The important thing is how do you uh, assess uh, clinically uh, the leaf nodes, yeah? common set of course cervical, axillary, and then inguinal and others. Yeah? Um, two uh, terms, there is regional and uh, generalized yeah? lymphadenopathy. If generalized, usually it is malignancy lah, as well as maybe systemic uh, apa, autoimmune. Yeah? Um, if regional, most likely due to infection. Uh, so the infection too can be non-specific infection that should uh, respond to our two weeks antibiotic course. But let's say it is not respond, uh, we usually need to think, even the since beginning moon, sometimes we need to think about apa, TB. Yeah? specific one but um, usually if non apa namanya non non specific case non non uh, clear case so we start with uh, broad spectrum antibiotic for two weeks yeah? but if it is memang apa namanya clear cut for tb yeah, we can directly apa uh, do the tb screening and then can diagnose early yeah? Um, for malignancy, of course, most common either leukemia or apa, lymphoma, and then as well as other autoimmune. Yeah? 
Um, apa lagi tadi? Yang infection itu can be can apa catch crash kawat part of Kawasaki, part Kawasaki nanti akan diskus juga masa chill apa child rest ya. Kita banyak diskus yang ini apa namanya current uh, apa namanya session current topics. Um, itulah um, the one assessment is importantnya so. Again, in 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 any problem uh, case, ni uh, our complete history and then thorough physical examination will determine our most likely diagnosis. Yeah. For example, kalau dia generalized lymphadenopathy with hepatosplenomegaly with anemia, so most likely apa leukemia. Of course, we need uh, uh, Full blood picture and bone marrow aspiration letter. Yeah. Uh, tapi kalau infection usually regional, and then uh, related with fever, acute onset usually. Then hopefully respond with antibiotic. Uh, antibiotic course yang two weeks so can can extend to three or maybe four weeks. Yeah. Uh, bear in your mind that actually not all uh, apa namanya infection tuh. Uh, will resolve uh, immediately juga. Sometimes ada I I got many cases as well. Dia yeah, actually uh, apa namanya not resolve. Dia still persist ya yeah, remains di lymph node itu still remains. But as long as it is not progressive, not increasing in size, um, uh, not painful or any other red flag study. So we just apa observe nah after we complete two weeks antibiotic there is no more other symptom only persistent lymphadenopathy we may uh, reassure the parents ya most likely parents kan dia apa nama worry kan kenapa ni ada mass ni ada uh, apa namanya biji tak hilang-hilang Sometimes dia akan persis, and then sometimes dia baru hilang. Even the apa namanya, the observation tu maybe six month, maybe one year, can be still persis. Some some may resolve juga. So itulah hari esoknya ini also important in many cases. But let's say it is progressive, increasing in size, with red flags, we should proceed with further investigation. Nah, yang penting tu is indication of lymph apa namanya biopsi ya lymph node biopsi. Kalau ada kan rutin tadi ya, send for FBP, send for apa lagi tadi banyak kan. Ada nah, apa namanya um, diagnostik punya investigation yang keywords of course apa namanya lymph node biopsi ya. Biopsi has to apa to common ways kan either open biopsi or fine needle ya. Tadi explain tak sah tadi uh, which one you prefer to find needle ke nak open ke macam mana? Uh, you nak explain about that but um, I think uh, find needle ni hmm? uh, I'm not sure what So ya, yeah. uh, well, we should know the risk and benefit lah. Of course, open biopsy will give more reliable sample ya. Yeah. Karena kita buat open biopsy, buat terus ambil mass tu. So sample tu dah apa namanya should be valid lah. Uh, kalau fine needle dia kan sometimes dia depend on the skill teknik as well kan. Dia sometimes ultrasound guided. Kalau tak kena ya tak dapat uh, apa reliable sample. Boleh miss apa namanya? Uh, false negatif pula tak ada parisa yang kita expect. Uh, tapi uh, open biopsy kan of course need surgery need uh, to contact with apa surgical base uh, doctors and and NS as well. Sometimes uh, easier to do fine needle like TB itu kalau buat biopsi. Usually kalau kita refer apa ENT dia akan buat biopsi juga. Tapi tak ada rasa apa many cases juga after biopsi dia tak akan resolve the wound tu. But TB uh, TB infection unless we start with TB treatment dia tak akan apa 
Kau nak risau pun. So ada Again got two cases juga dia Of course Biopsy dia Apa uh, Poor wound healing Dia still open And abscess And so on and so forth So better TB ni Better fine needle Tapi kalau Formal regnancy No issue lah Kita buat open biopsy Kita ambil Terus tu We'll have no issue With the wound healing Kalau TB ni Because it is a Chronic infection There is a risk of namanya poor wound healing process as well as kalau in apa nama dia immunocompromised uh, chart kalau macam HIV itu kalau kita buat open biopsy risk of infection is higher ya compare to vanidal vanidal only do one shot single apa uh, needle aspiration Uh, depend on the apa namanya operator as well kalau yang tadi yang open biopsy of course kan surgical base kan either surgeon or anti surgeon uh, kalau yang fine needle usually uh, pathologist lah yang buat depend of the availability of the uh, specialist as well consultant as well okay So, Asyah tak ada buat kuis uh, ke, spot diagnosis ke, tak ada yang kau, uh, picture tadi ada tak, picture? I lupa buat picture tapi I didn't buat kuis. Tak senyap, panggil lah satu-satu, panggil satu yang tak ada... Oh, Zain, Zain Samsir mana Zain Samsir? Oh, ada. Yes, yes. Uh, apa eh? nak tanya diagnosis ke nak tanya history? <laughs> you you prefer to get history or to get a spot diagnosis? Ada, tak ada idea. Yang penting tak apa lah. Kalau tak ada idea, nanti later lah you learn buat dia apa common example of the disease system. Okay, alright. So, tak apa lah. We proceed with uh, second topic. Nurul Fatihah. Yes. Alright, so uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, my name is Fatiha and today I will be discussing about child with hypertension. So before uh, we proceed, uh, I'm pretty sure all of you already know that the level of blood pressure in children is quite unique, right? They they, uh, they vary, the value varies depending on the gender, depending on the age, and also depending on the heart. So, um, blood pressure, hypertension in children is, def is defined by, uh, as you can see on the table on your right side, there is definition of blood pressure categories and uh, according to age group and stages. Okay, so uh, they divided into two groups, which are children age 13 years old and below, and also children age 13 years old and above. So for children age 13 years old and below, normally the BP, the blood pressure, should be less than 90th percentile. As you can see on your left side, there is a graph where 90th percentile is on the green area. So when you uh, mark on the Chart, the blood pressure should fall on the green area. For um, 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 before they go to stage one hypertension, there is a stage which is a pre-hypertension stage where the blood pressure is elevated uh, for more than 90th percentile to 94th percentile. Or blood pressure measurement is 120 or 80 millimeter mercury, which is on the uh, yellow, on the orange area, 90 to 95 percentile. If the blood pressure 
elevated further up to 130 over 80 millimeter mercury to 139 over 80 millimeter mercury or the blood pressure achieved that 95 percentile so that is stage one hypertension if the blood pressure elevated more more than uh, 140 over 90 millimeter mercury or the blood pressure is at above 95th percentile, which is on this red, uh, red area, then there is stage 2 hypertension. For children aged like 13 years old or more, which is um, secondary school children, the blood pressure uh, is the same as adult, where the normal blood pressure should be less than 120 over 80 millimeter mercury and uh, elevated uh, pre-hypertension stage, where the blood pressure reaches 120 over 80, 229 over less than 80 millimeter mercury. For stage one, is 130 over 80, 239 over 89 millimeter mercury. Okay. All right. So uh, a bit on epidemiology of uh, hypertension. In a study, they found that initially the prevalence of hypertension in primary school children was quite high, which is around 13.4 percent where they also found out that this group of children, they also has uh, associated with obesity. And uh, in NHMS 2016, they found out that the prevalence of obesity was 6% as compared to in 2011 with um, wider range, age, age range, with where the children below 10 years old, the prevalence of Obesity is 5.3%. This shows that the, um, the, the prevalence of hypertension and also uh, obesity keep increasing year by year, which is so, uh, give us, uh, uh, that we should be worried about it. Okay, so in Malaysia, um, the children should be screened for Children, uh, they, they take as seven years old as a cutoff point for blood pressure screening. So for children uh, aged seven years old and older, they should measure the blood pressure at every medical encounter, which means each time the children come to clinic to get any, uh, to sit for any treatment, they should be measured for blood pressure. But um, other than that, they also, uh, the blood pressure should also be measured annually if they are obese. As compared to children less than seven years old, uh, the blood pressure should be measured at every, every medical encounter. For those who has uh, the risk factor of developing hypertension, such as history of complication requiring, requiring an ICU admission, they have congenital heart disease, recurrent UTI, or renal problem. They have family history of renal disease. Uh, they have history of organ transplant or any treatment, uh, previous treatment known to, to raise blood pressure. Uh, this is the illness and also evidence of base intracranial pressure. Okay, so as uh, in adult, in children, we also have to ensure the uh, blood pressure measurement technique is correct. So um, first, we have to choose a appropriate calf size, calf size, which uh, the calf width should cover more than 40% of the upper arm, and the calf length should cover the whole arm. So when you when uh, we want to measure the blood pressure of the children, we have to uh, ensure that the child is in sitting position and the arm is supported as. Like you can uh, you see in the picture on your right, the arm should be supported, and we have to make sure that before we take uh, the blood pressure, the children should be rested for around uh, for three to five minutes before we take the measurement, and then um, uh, usually we measure the blood pressure using uh, uh, using oscillometry device. But if the blood pressure is more than 90, 90 percentile, then we should repeat the blood measurement using a sculpted through technique. And the blood pressure should be measured three times at each visit and this, uh, the, the average level is taken. 
Okay, so this is uh, the algorithm that I have been mentioned before. Just the same um, um, steps. Um, if you use oscillometry method, and uh, you have to note the blood pressure level. If it is more than 90 percentile, then you should repeat with uh, oscillometry method. Okay, this is important because uh, for diagnosis of blood pressure, it is made when um, the hypertension in, in the child or the is made when uh, the patient has oscillatory confirmed blood pressure reading more than 95, 95th percentile on three different visits. Um, we have to make sure that three different visits, not three different reading, but uh, three different visits. Okay. Okay, so uh, once you uh, suspect this patient, uh, your patient has uh, elevated uh, blood pressure, then you have to think about the cause of hypertension behind it. So it could be what you call hypertension, which is very common in children, where the, uh, as it's named, what you call hypertension, the level of blood pressure is increased when the children um, see the daughter, but the level of blood pressure is normal when the children, the setting is outside the office setting or, or which is outside the clinic, which is uh, either at home or at school. So one of the methods that you can use is you can use ambulatory blood pressure measurement. This is to, for us to differentiate uh, either this child is having sustained hypertension or white core hypertension. Okay, if the child, children have white core hypertension, it does not require treatment, but we need to monitor the blood pressure in order for us to detect uh, early detection for development of sustained hypertension in the, in the children. Okay, if it is not white core hypertension, then you have to think about, uh, you have to think of two, which are, it is either primary hypertension or secondary hypertension. So primary hypertension usually in children each six years old and above with um uh, with risk factor of family history, uh, positive family has hypertension, overweight or obese, and also absence of history and physical findings to suggest to suggest a secondary cause of hypertension, then we consider the children to have primary hypertension. But when there is absence of this factor, um, then uh, we, we have to think about other causes that can cause to, that can cause risk in blood pressure in these children. So there are several causes of uh, secondary hypertension in children. <clears throat> so um, among of the common causes, which are <clears throat> parenchymal renal disease, uh, such as coronary nephritis, pyelonephritis, acute kidney injury, uh, polycystic kidney disease, obstructive neuropathy for renal vascular, which, uh, which is also common, which is a uh, renal artery stenosis, and endocrine disease such as cortisol excess, thyroid disease, uh, for cardiovascular disease, uh, partition of iota. Central nervous system such as pain, uh, as in adult, uh, like us, when we have pain, we all, there will be also an uh, increase in blood pressure, right? So in children, there's, there will be the same when the children is in stress condition, there will be an uh, increase in blood pressure. And then malignancy such as lung tumor, and also we uh, need to ask about pharmacological history such as uh, drug that can raise blood pressure such as uh, corticosteroid, sample to mammalics, uh, nicotine, caffeine, and others. Uh, other causes of secondary hypertension, such as uh, obstructive sleep apnea, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, and also genetic defects. Okay, so uh, what should we do when we encounter a child with hypertension? So first of all, uh, we have to take a proper history. So, um, Mm -hmm. So the uh, first in history of his in, in illness, we can ask about the symptom that suggests hypertension, such as uh, history of fainting, headache, 
and also compassion. Next, for anti-anthal history, you can ask about uh, anti anthal imaging, maternal health. Uh, for example, uh, if mother with preeclampsia before, they have they will have this factor uh, for their child to develop blood pressure, hypertension, <clears throat> and so drugs during pregnancy. That is about uh, neonatal history, such as prematurity, which is also can, um, uh, uh, which is also the cause uh, for risk in blood pressure in children. Um, both with um, medical catheterization, bronchopulmonary pressure, and also other medication. <clears throat> then we also need to identify the risk factor, such as family history of chronic disease, and. Uh, uh, need to, we also need to ask about the nutrition or diet history of this patient, whether there, there is high salt intake and uh, level of physical activity, are they, uh, is it uh, active or sedentary lifestyle? Okay, next is uh, for uh, other history that uh, we should ask also, uh, history that can help us to identify the cause. Uh, such as history of renal disease and neurological tract infections, history of heart problems, uh, medication history, dry history, and also history of sleep disturbance and snor snoring in other children because we want to, ro to rule out obstructive sleep apnea. Okay. Um, so after we uh, have taken uh, physical history, uh, phys history taking, so we need to do physical examination. So this physical examination it can be help can help us to identify the underlying cause, especially secondary cause of hypertension. So this table it shows that um, example of physical findings that to suggest to suggest the uh, under, underlying cause of hypertension. For example, fibro sign, tachycardia, and hypothyroidism. Decrease lower extremity pulse in coarticular of aorta. Uh, at eyes, you can see retinal changes uh, on pandoscopy, and then ENT adenotonsillar hypertrophy to suggest uh, sleep disordered breathing. Uh, then we can measure their height or weight uh, uh, to to uh, to to look for any growth retardation or obesity, and the head and neck movements. Uh, you can look more faces uh, in Cushing syndrome disease, Cushing syndrome. Uh, at skin, you may also uh, find failure, flashy or diaphrosis to suggest your chromosetoma. On chest, you can uh, hurt heart murmur to suggest coordination of iota. Abdomen, can, uh, you can look for mass, for Williams tumor, and probable kidney, for polycystic kidney disease. And uh, also check for uh, check at the genitalia for ambiguous genitalia to suggest uh, abdominal hypotension. And other extremities, you can find uh, joint swelling or also muscle weakness. Okay. Um, other than that, you also need to um, learn about the sign and symptoms, uh, red flag sign and symptoms in hypertension. This when this sign is in the presence in children, it may indicate that this patient uh, have target organ damage, which require urgent treatment. So target organ damage, uh, first one is on brain. Uh, the patient will have hypertensive encephalopathy. They will be presented with nausea, vomiting, headache, visual disturbance, behavioral changes, altered mental status, drowsiness, seizure, on vascular changes. Uh, on vessel, there will be hypertensive vascular changes and also increase intracranial pressure. So we can check this by fundoscopy examination, where we can find retinal hemorrhages and also cotton wool vision and uh, uh, presence of papillary edema in, in, in increased ICP. For cardiac failure, uh, patient will uh, presented with symptoms, signs and symptoms of chest pain, breathlessness, edema, little cardiomegaly, and also pulmonary edema. Okay, this is quite the same as adult, as adult cardiac failure. Okay. Uh, now, uh, yeah. 
Wait, sorry. Okay, now we uh, proceed to investigation part. So, um, routinely in patients with hypertension, we will do urine dipstick for proteinuria and uh, proteinuria and hematuria because uh, mostly, most uh, because mostly due to uh, renal disease in secondary hypertension, and then urine culture for infection, evidence of urine, urinary tract infection, also, and also full blood count also for evidence of infection, uh, blood urea, serum, creatinine, and electrolyte to know whether uh, the, the renal function is affected or not, and the thyroid stimulate hormone is indicated uh, if the patient is suspected to have hypothyroidism and abdominal renal and urinary, <coughs> urinary, urinary tract ultrasound to visualize the kidney and also to identify any mass uh, presence. Okay, other uh, investigation is to investigate comorbids that may be present uh, in this region. For example, hyperlipidemia, so we can uh, do fasting lipid profile and also fasting blood sugar uh, together with HbA1c for diabetes mentors. Uh, if we sus, uh, identify any target organ damage, we can also request for echocardiography to look for the uh, ejection fraction of the heart. Other investigation, uh, you may request other investigation uh, depending on the cost, underlying cost that you suspected in the patient. Okay, for the management, uh, the target of management, there are two. First one is children and adolescents with hypertension, but without uh, underlying kidney disease, underlying renal problems. So the blood pressure target for systolic and diastolic is uh, less than 90, 90 years percentile and 130 over 80 millimeter mercury in adolescent less than 13 years old. But for children and adolescents with, together, they have both uh, kidney disease and also hypertension. So the blood pressure target is quite uh, high, which is less than 50 years percentile. So the management, we can, uh, the, the management can be divided into two, which is non-pharmacological, and also pharmacological. For non pharmacological, usually uh, is uh, the main intervention for primary hypertension because in primary hypertension, the risk factor is one of the risk factor is obesity, right? So uh, that is why non pharmacological intervention is the first uh, first line treatment for primary hypertension. So uh, we can encourage the children, the children to exercise and then uh, for advise the parents to help the children to, for weight loss and um, control the salt intake and also cessation of smoking or vaping if they do so, if the children do so. Okay, for pharmacological treatment, when it is indicated, it is indicated when uh, there is hypertension with fail lifestyle modification, which means fail non-pharmacological intervention. Next is it is also indicated in symptomatic hypertension and then stage two hypertension with a clearly modifiable uh, factor. Oh, sorry, without a clearly modifiable factor, which means there is no risk factor such as obesity, but the blood pressure is high. Uh, stage 2 hypertension. So, pharmacological treatment is indicated. And next is any stage 2 hypertension associated with uh, CKD or DM and also hypertension with target organ damage. Okay, so uh, on your right side, there is the table, uh, the list of drugs, uh, anti-hypertensive medication that you can use uh, in uh, in, in this condition. So uh, how the step to choose is um, on your left side, there, the, there is step care approach. The first step is begin with recommended dose of desired drug, which is only monotherapy, 
single dosing. So initial dose, uh, one type of drug, single dosing. But if blood pressure is still not achieved, blood pressure control is not achieved, then you can uh, add the doses and, and the, until maximum dose or desired MP target is reached. So on the top third column on the table on your right side, that is the maximum dose uh, for each drug. Okay, however, if the blood pressure is still not achieved, then you can add second type of drug, preferably thiazide from either chlorothiazide or hydrochlorothiazide. Uh, but if it's still not achieved, then you can add third drug of different class, or you can consult a petition aspect in children, childhood and adult, adults and hypertension. Okay, uh, so the main goal uh, of therapy in children with hypertension basically mainly to prevent target organ damage and also prevent from developing uh, into adult hypertension and also a metabolic syndrome. Okay, so um, as you all know, as we, uh, we all know, in hypertension, there will be condition known as hypertensive crisis which consists of hypertensive emergency, hypertensive urgency, and also hypertensive encephalopathy. So hypertensive emergency is defined as acute severe symptomatic elevation in blood pressure with evidence of potentially life-threatening symptoms or target organ damage. So there is acute elevation of blood pressure together with target organ damage. The blood pressure is elevated far above the level of stage to hypertension. For uh, as compared to hypertensive urgency, there is acute severe elevation, but without uh, target organ damage symptoms. For hypertensive encephalopathy, encephalopathy, this is one of the red, uh, red flag sign, right? Hypertensive encephalopathy is characterized by severe blood pressure together with cerebral edema and neurological symptoms, uh, such as liturgy, seizure, or coma. However, uh, you also have to note that even though there is no extreme blood pressure elevation, uh, hypertensive encephalopathy may uh, can occur as well when there is a sudden increase in blood pressure. Uh, even though the, the elevation is not extreme, because our brain cannot compensate uh, the, the sudden increase in blood pressure uh, level. Okay, so what is the management of uh, hypertensive emergency? First, we have to admit patient into ICU or at least high dependency or what we, uh, what. Next, we have to immediately uh, immediately administer vascular assess, then monitoring of uh, vital signs, neurological status, and also monitor the urea output. Uh, next step is manage any serious complications that present at that time. For example, if the, the patient has seizure, then we can give anticonvulsant. Okay. Uh, fifth one is um, uh, uh, the goal of uh, hypertensive emergency is to reduce the blood pressure, but we have to reduce the blood pressure promptly but gradually because sudden reduce in blood pressure can uh, cause intracranial bleed. Okay, uh, the initial goal is to reduce mean atrial pressure by approximately 25% over the first 24 hours, which, mean, which means that uh, you do not have to uh, reduce the blood pressure at the, pre at the time of presentation, but you have, to, you have uh, 24 hours to uh, reduce the blood pressure gradually. And for hypertensive emergency, uh, you have to note that we must give intravenous uh, drugs and also continuous infusions. For urgency, uh, we can uh, it can be treated with uh, oral drugs only. So this is uh, the list of anti-hypertensive drugs for hypertensive emergency and also urgency. Uh, commonly, we will use this first agent, which is uh, IV labetalol 
or hypertensive emergency. Okay, I think uh, that's all. Hmm. All right. So, so apa? Uh, comprehensive juga banyak sangat ya. Hmm. Tuh ya. Uh, maybe you boleh uh, stop share new. Saya boleh share konten tak ya? Coba tengok. Can you off your apa? Uh, sharing screen? Stop. Ya. Yeah. Okay. Ya. 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 Ah, ya. Fatimah ni. Fatihah. Ayang okay. yang share. Ada. Screen. Hmm. Oh sorry kan nak tak jadi dah. Because I'm using handphone. Kalau handphone tak boleh. Okay, tak ya lah. Alright. So go back to your screen lah. You can share again the screen tadi. Okay ya, buat the basic ya. Uh, always remember that um, apa namanya cut off BP in children is not uh, one single number ya. Uh, there is a chart. Uh, there is also apa namanya uh, table uh, based on age, gender, and height. Ya. Uh, so kalau pakai yang this chart ni, um, uh, the problem kalau pakai chart ni sometimes different person have different apa namanya reading lah dia. Sometimes ada yang kata 90th centile tu for example 100, ada yang kata 100 and one, ada yang kata 100 and two. Actually, easier kalau pakai table ya. Ada table of BP, uh, BP itu based on apa? Uh, gender, uh, boys or, or girl, and then age, and then uh, percentile of height. Uh, kalau in table kan, just one single number kan. For example, uh, percentile 90 of a three year old boy will be 90 millimeter mercury, for example, like that. So we can use a single uh, similar uh, cut off. Yeah. Okay, and then measurement tadi sudah explain. Memang kena three occasion with uh, apa namanya proper uh, or upgrade cuff and so on and so forth. And then is apa classification of the etiology. Um, simple ya, primary or secondary. In children is contrary with adult ya. Kalau adult, most common maybe uh, idiopathic or uh, primary hypertension, 70% maybe. Yeah. But in children, dia yeah, vice versa, uh, most common will be secondary. 70% of the uh, apa, hypertension in children will be secondary hypertension, which is uh, we should have the non etiology or disease. Yeah. And the most common will be renal problem, yeah, renal diseases, AGN, IG nephropathy, chronic kidney disease, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Maybe nephrotic syndrome can can have hypertension as well. Uh, so uh, approach of the treatment will be different. Yeah. Kalau primary hypertension, uh, will need long life management. Kan? Even in children pun ada yang primary hypertension. Uh, sample children with apa, metabolic uh, apa, syndrome, yang obese ke apa-apa, dia akan primary apa, need long life anti hypertensive agent tapi kalau yang secondary for example AGN kan very, very short period kan dia 2 2 weeks 2 to 3 weeks pun boleh resolve the apa hypertension nephrotic syndrome pun kalau kita dah start steroid dia BP boleh normalize juga okay so uh, kalau yang secondary hypertension of course kena treat the underlying cause and then the treatment is not long life ya once resolved, then we stop the treatment. Um, I think that the, 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 the summary. Uh, any questions? Yang lain? Sinyak je semua. Sinyak ni dah faham semua ke? Doctor, can you explain more about that tree visit? 
about Happening. three different visits. Why well, you have to wait for like three different visits? Like, and do you need like that three different visit to has to be at the uh, BP hypertension or what? Yes, uh, different visit even in outpatient setting. Yeah, uh, if patient is uh, come to our clinic. So once we, we measure BP, apa, high BP, uh, okay lah, we observe first, uh, uh, let the patient come next week. Usually when uh, we ask the patient to come weekly lah, next week and then another one week lah. Once it is persistent in whole three visit, yeah, memang apa, hypertension, barulah kita treat. This one for primary, yeah, primary and no, a new case of hypertension with no non uh, apa, uh, causes ya yeah? uh, unless kalau ada secondary hypertension for example patient come with uh, hematuria and edema dah clear cut kan patient with AGN so we just admit to self management of AGN case-case yang trivisit ni itulah yang isolated hypertension only uh, still no non uh, etiology most likely maybe primary hypertension we must make sure lah memang betul-betul hypertension or ada tadi yang first uh, first common, uh, common causes tadi white coat uh, hypertension which is kalau dah takut datang klinik datang klinik je dah dah menangis teriak-teriak uh, kalau kita measure akan tinggilah bp tu uh, so ya uh, so memang ni trivisit can come again next week, make sure dia betul high BP, and then another one week. So we have two weeks lah to observe kan. Now next week and another one week kan. After two weeks, uh, three visit ni, uh, betul lah hypertension. Uh, start lah treatment. Uh, with, we, of course, within two weeks ni pun kita dah start to do investigation kan. At least check UFAM check other apa, blood investigation maybe kalau dah non ada non IT secondary hypertension apa we should as well the, the hypertension just like in adult patient come, will come regularly to clinic of course kan ya uh, of course uh, with non medication dulu like low salt diet And then once we decide to start treatment, it yeah, start with single therapy dulu, and then can be can combine kalau no no apa no no reducing the PP. Okay, alright. Okay. I understood, doctor. Uh, doctor, one question, and then um, yes. as for the lifestyle modification, uh, yeah. how long we put patient on lifestyle modification, and then like if they fail. Then you proceed with pharmacological. Yes, ah, uh, this one actually apa? Yeah, easy to say but difficult to apa to do kan? Yeah, of course everyone, even including me, pun senang jo suruh lifestyle apa exercise lah. The exercise, uh, two weeks maybe BP normal atau body weight pun turun tapi lepas tu makan banyak lagi ni naik lagi. Ah. Uh, in outpatient setting usually kalau we start apa start to manage to even non medication usually we do uh, apa yang apa namanya shortest duration yang weekly tapi kalau usually kalau for bp ni kita buat monthly lah so, so tengoklah for example we decide oh non apa medication dulu suruh lifestyle so with apa non apa poor habit lah, sambil dia obes, apa makan banyak, so coba suruh dispat apa we uh, when we decide to apa to do non apa namanya to change the change lifestyle, we also do some other step as well, bukan hanya kita cakap aja, uh, tapi we also refer to dietitian, for example ya. Nah, kalau refer dietitian kan dia akan apa bantu apa bantu kalori counting just the apa the, the healthy diet and so on and so forth. Kalau dia kita cakap oh, suruh exercise and then kurangkan makan bulan depan balik ah confirm lah patient next month akan 
come with apa with similar situation still obese lagi still hypertension lagi tapi we should do more clear apa namanya uh, guidance and step lah dietitian uh, exercise pun maybe we may refer to physiotherapist as well because in rehab tu boleh je dia suruh exercise uh, pergi rehab buat apa namanya treadmill ke buat apa-apa exercise ke sana. Okay, alright. Alright, thank you doctor. Welcome. Okay, any more questions? Tada. Ya. Ah, ah tadi ah uh, doktor kata kena monthly observation kan? How mm-hmm. how long is the monthly observation? Like, is it Uh, ada specific duration until they change the treatment to more in, uh, more therapeutic. Yeah, every visit tu we should apa plan next step next step lah. Just like macam sama je macam contoh ya asthma management ya monthly sama kan. We plan monthly. Uh, we start for example MDI fluidikasa next month. Kalau still poor control we step up. Kalau well control maybe we can step down. Or usually we after well control one month we apa namanya we maintain dulu in three months to six months ah sama lah hypertension pun juga sama ya because it's chronic situation ah one month next month come come again ya kita review lah kalau after one month lifestyle changes for example oh dah cantik dah hello body weight pun boleh turun BP boleh normalize so we we may continue for another three months tapi kalau yang in next visit tu next month dia apa fail we should think about the next step lah maybe for the next visit yang another one month kita start medication or apa apa lah other even medication pun boleh juga apa kalau dia obesity ya we start as well and we also check the cholesterol for example kan lipid profile kalau with hypercholesterolemia we also need to start apa uh, anti kolesterol anti lipid baiklah ya uh, this yang primary cases tuh kalau in children jarang children tuh uh, most common will be acute acute onset uh, apa namanya secondary hypertension AGN ke kalau chronic kidney disease memang akan susah lah because despite we give anti hypertension we need to Uh, preserve uh, the kidney itu with uh, multiple approach, nah kan? With multidisciplinary approach. Kalau lagi yang kamu ni, ya? um, kidney, um, acid kidney, chronic kidney, depend lah. Jadi, it will be of course will be case by case basis lah. Oke, okay. thank you dokter. Welcome. Ha. Investigation as well ya, nanti itulah masa kalau patient stable, what patient kan, investigasi kan kita buat step by step, masa first visit ya, for example, urine examination, UFM, and then kalau nak cek for renal artery stenosis kan, we uh, try to get appointment for ultrasound Doppler ya yang macam lipid profile, blood sugar ni kita boleh buat masa first visit. Echo tengoklah kalau my clinic ya will do directly tapi kalau other doctors kan refer to me maybe ya by next month visit. Yang entah yang simple macam TFT, electrolyte kan kita boleh one stop masa first visit kita boleh terus uh, get the result apa send di sampel and then get the result by next visit. Okay, alright. Okay, any more questions? Okay, thank you Fatiha. Yang last Sabila ke Solihah tadi saya tak dengar. Uh. Bismillah, assalamualaikum. Uh, before I start, I would like to apologize. Because I cannot turn on my video, my internet connection is not really stable. 
So uh -huh. if you guys cannot hear me, please uh, let me know. Okay, uh, so my name is Sabila and I will be the last presenter. Insyaallah I will proceed with a uh, child with rash. Okay, so, uh, uh, Sabila, before yeah? you start, nanti you ada few apa namanya pictures kan nanti kan? Ada some pictures kan? Ah, uh, ada ada banyak pictures. Kalau boleh, you hilangkan the diagnosis tu. Apa spot diagnosis lah? Suruh kawan jawab nanti. Uh, okay. Ada semua ada jawapan dah. Ada, uh, ada, ada jawapan. Okay, alright. Okay, proceed. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, this is my outline. We will be discussing on the type of rash and how to approach a child with rash. Okay, next. Uh, okay, uh, let us start with type of rash. Okay, uh, rash can be classified into two according to their pathology and characteristic. Uh, next. Okay, uh, this is the first classification of rash which we can classify according to its characteristic. Uh, there is four, which is a uh, flat, raised, uh, fluid field, and hemorrhagic. So for flat, uh, the terms that we use is macule and patch. For raised, uh, papule and plug. For uh, fluid field, we have vesicle, bullet, and postule. And for hemorrhagic, uh, we have purpura, petechiae, and ecchymosis. So I guess that all of you already know the the apa, the definition of these terms. So let's uh, just have a quick recap. Uh, for flat, uh, we have macule and patches. For macule, um, macule is uh, the term macule is uh, used to describe the changes in the color without any e elevation of the rash. It can be erythema, hypopigmentation, or hyperpigmentation. The size uh, of macule is less than one centimeter. Uh, the patches is uh, similar to macule, uh, but uh, the the size is more than one centimeter. Okay, uh, next. Uh, next is a uh, raised lesion. The terms that we use to describe uh, the raised lesion is papule, plug, and nodule. Papule is uh, less than one centimeter in diameter. For plug, it is more than one centimeter, but uh, it is a uh, flat and broad surface. For nodule, it is a uh, more than one centimeter in diameter, uh, but it has a more rounded surface compared to plug. Okay, next, uh, for fluid field, we have vesicle, postule, and bule. For vesicle, the size is small, less than one centimeter, uh, and the content is clear or uh, straw colored fluid. Uh, uh, for postule, uh, the size is uh, the same as vesicle, but the content is a uh, purulent material. And bule is a uh, large, more than one centimeter vesicle. Okay, next, uh, we have hemorrhagic. Hemorrhagic is a uh, petechiae, purpura, and ecchymosis. For petechiae, petechiae, uh, the size is less than two millimeter. It does not blanch by pressure, and it can be macule or papule. Purpura is similar to petechiae, but the size is three to ten millimeter. For ecchymosis, um, it is larger, and the size is more than ten millimeter. Okay, uh, next. We also can classify the rash according to its uh, pathology, primary lesion or secondary lesion. So what is primary lesion? Primary lesion uh, represent the initial pathologic changes of the rash. Uh, it is rarely seen on the patient during the presentation because uh, most of the lesion has already altered uh, by the by time and the external factors. For secondary lesion, uh, it is defined as the result of the effects of primary lesion due to secondary external forces such as uh, scratching or superimposed bacterial infection. Okay, next. Uh, okay, this is the secondary skin lesion. I, get, uh, I think you can read by yourself after this. Okay, next. Okay, this is the most important part for my presentation today, which is um, approach to child with rash. Uh, next. Okay, for uh, history, uh, we need to know the patient's background, the, uh, the patient's age and sex, and then proceed to HOPI and other history. Uh, next. Okay, the first question that we need to ask the patient is duration and onset. Uh, it is important to know the duration and onset of the rash. We need to ask the patient how long that the patient had the rash. And, oh, sorry, we need to ask the parents how long that the patient had the rash. Uh, is this the first episodes or recurrent episodes? For duration, 
uh, it is useful to split into three time zone groups. Uh, when we know uh, the duration, it is more easier for us to get the differentia differential diagnosis according to time zone. So you can see in this table, uh, I took from Murta. So uh, for we have acute, acute to chronic and chronic. For acute hours to days, uh, acute to chronic, uh, days to weeks, uh, and chronic weeks to months. Okay, there is a differential diagnosis there. You can read later. Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, the second question that we need to ask from the patient is sight or fresh from the parents. Sorry. Uh, we must ask the, pa the parents where is the rash and where did it uh, start? Uh, where did it start? Uh, lesion in specific area is helpful in order to establish the diagnosis. As you can see in the table, the specific areas can be uh, on the face, scalp, flexure, uh, mouth, nails, and penis. Okay, you can read the differential later. Okay, next is a uh, characteristic. Uh, for characteristic, uh, it is very important uh, to determine the characteristic of the lesion. This is because uh, every disease presented with different characteristic of rashes uh, depending on the causes of the rashes. Uh, the characteristic of the rash can be divided into, uh, you can see in the table, into maculopapular, vesicular, bullous, and postular, and uh, hemorrhagic rash, such as petiche and purpuric. Uh, the causes for each char uh, characteristic can be due to bacterial infection, viral infection, and other causes. Okay, next. Okay, uh, the fourth question that you need to ask is pattern of the di distribution. Uh, where did it first appears and where is it? Where where the rash uh, now? We also need to ask the parents uh, whether it is localized or widespread. If it is widespread, where is the distribution? Uh, the you can see in the table that uh, the widespread lesion can be due to atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, scabies, drugs, and urticaria. Uh, so uh. The, if the lesion is widespread, um, the lesion can be distributed either to the trunk or uh, peripheral. If it is localized, you can refer to the previous uh, uh, table that I have shown just now for site of the lesion. Okay, next. Uh, next, uh, we need to ask the patient, uh, is, there, is the, uh, the rash itchy? Uh, itching is a very distra distressing, distressing symptom that uh, stimulate the desire to scratch and this will cause damage to the skin. So the patient uh, may wake up uh, at the night and at, at night and this is not uh, this not only affect the child but also to the parents because the parents have to comfort the child and the scratching also will cause a uh, marked excoriation to the skin. The nature of the itching is very helpful to establish the diagnosis. The rash that is uh, not itchy is unlikely to be scabies and one uh, that is very itchy is unlikely to be a skin tumor. Okay, you can read later the differential. Okay, next is uh, progression. For progression, uh, it is important to, to aware of uh, what is the initial appearance uh, is there any changes in the morphology, how it was evolved, and is it getting worse? Okay. For uh, aggra aggravating and re relieving factors, uh, we need to ask uh, whether uh, there is any change in the rash with temperature or contact with uh, certain materials. And we also need to ask the, the parents, uh, does they put any ointments or creams uh, at the rash? And if so, is it getting better or worse? Okay, next slide. Uh, okay, next is uh, associated symptom. We need to ask the uh, parents, is there any fever? Because the, fev the fever indicates infection and inflammation. Uh, is there any pain? Uh, pain, uh, we can rule out uh, shingles. And if we suspect allergy, uh, we need to ask about the possible allergens or triggering factors. For example, in eczema, we ask about any recent changes of irritants such as soap or shampoo. 
we also need to ask, is there any exposure to house dust mites or pets uh, and have the child uh, worn any new clothing, clothing recently? And for, for a systemic review, uh, it's very important to find uh, the other clues. Uh, for example, in Hanok Shonlin Purpura, the patient may also have joint swelling and pain, abdominal pain, melina, and hematuria. Okay, next. Next slide. Okay. Uh, these are the other history that you, you need to ask. First is past medical history. We need to ask, is there any history of chicken pox? This is to rule out reactivation of the varicella zoster virus that is caused by shingles. Uh, however, it is very rare in children. Uh, we also need to ask history of atopy, such as eczema, allergic rhinitis, asthma, allergic con conjunctivitis, to rule out any possibilities of atopic dermatitis. For immunization history, uh, we need to ask the, the parents, does the child get MMR vaccination uh, at uh, during six months and twelve months year yes uh, uh, twelve months and then uh, is there any recent vaccination to rule out the adverse effect of a uh, vaccination for drug history uh, we need to ask the patient is there any drug or food allergy and is there any uh, is there is uh, upper, uh, any recent medication taken by the, the children. For family history, we ask about uh, family history of skin disease, including atopy uh, or psoriasis. Uh, for social history, uh, is there any family or friends has similar lesion to rule out the possibility of contagious disease, such as uh, scabies? Uh, is there any history of traveling, dengue prone area, outbreaks, uh, water and recreational activities? Okay, next slide. Mm. Okay, after we obtain the history, we proceed with physical examination. Mm. Uh, first, uh, we look at the general condition of the patient, such as hemodynamic status, respiratory status, consciousness and alertness level. Uh, this is to ensure that the patient is clinically stable. Uh, after that, we, uh, we proceed with inspection. Uh, the patient uh, should, should always be examined in a good light. A full body examination, including hair, nails, mucosal surface, may reveal a lesion or eruption, which the patient may be unaware. So we need to examine a uh, full body. Uh, there, are, there are four core steps to examine the rash. Uh, the first one is we need to determine the type of lesion or the lesion morphology. Uh, after we determine the lesion, we must determine the color. Uh, is the entire lesion has the same color or, or various color. Uh, after color, we need to identify the shape of the lesion. Uh, then we need to describe the arrangement of the, of the rash. Okay, then uh, 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 lastly, uh, uh, we need to determine the distribution of the rash. Is the rash generalized or localized? Uh, is there any particular pattern to the rash? For example, is it only in the sun exposed area? Okay. And lastly, don't forget to examine the entire patients, in, including hair, nails, mucosa, and in between toes and fingers. Okay. Uh, to make it easy, you can use this uh, mnemonic, uh, SCALDA. S is for shape, C is for color, A, arrangement. L, lesion morphology, D, distribution, and A, always check hair, nails, mucous membrane, and in between, fingers and toes. Okay, so remember, skull down. Okay, for palpation, for palpation, uh, we palpate the surface of a uh, rash, check for temperature, tenderness, and uh, consistency, and then uh, uh, palpate for the thickness of the rash, uh, and the last one is we can we have to do the blanche test. We press on the rash with finger for uh, finger for erythema. Uh, the red area should go white when we press, and it should return to red within few seconds, indicating that there is good blood flow. For purpura, uh, purpura there is no blanching of rash uh, due to extravasation of blood. Okay. Uh, for uh, after after we complete. Uh, uh, after that, uh, we complete with uh, system examination based on the differential diagnosis.
Okay, next. Um, so uh, after we have done with history and physical examination, uh, several differential diagnoses uh, should come across our mind based on the morphology of the lesion. So uh, these are the possible causes of maculopapular rash. I will go one by one quickly because we already learned this before. Okay, next, next slide. Uh, apa back back yang di slide tadi? Yang previous slide. Ah, ni. Uh, oh, I call one ya. Yeah. Nur Zakira, di mana? Ada? <laughs> Ada. Spot diagnosis. Pilih yang mana satu tu ada choices tu kat situ. Mizan. Mizan. Okey nanti siapa Sabila jawab ya. Alright. Proceed. Betul ke tak Mizan ni? Uh, betul. Okey alright. Uh, okay, uh, okay. The first uh, causes of Mm, Mycopapular rash is a uh, scarlet fever. Scarlet fever is caused by group A beta hemolytic uh, streptococcus. Uh, the characteristic of rash is diffuse macular papular rash that uh, blanches with pressure uh, that we call as sandpaper rash. Uh, the site of rash is uh, it starts in growing and armpits and it will cover the trunk and extremities uh, and it spreads our palms and so. Uh, the rash most marked in the skin folds area such as anticubital fossa and axillary folds and the patient also may have a uh, strawberry tongue. Okay, you can see in the picture. Okay, okay next. Rheumatic fever. Okay, rheumatic fever is uh, caused by uh, group uh, A, he beta hemolytic streptococcus. Uh, the, uh, the characteristic of rash is uh, for uh, rheumatic fever, only less than 5% of patients presented with uh, rash. Uh, the rash is round with a pale pink center surrounded by a slightly raised red outline, which we call as erythema marginatum, and the rash is uh, not uh, is not itchy. The site of rash is uh, uh, on the trunk and extremities. Okay, next. Next is, uh, okay, this, this one is measles, okay, uh, caused by rubiola virus. The rash is erythematous, maculopapula, and blanching. It begins on the head, uh, spread in cephalocaudal pattern, and it's highly contagious. In severe cases, a uh, patient will uh, be presented with black measles. Uh, the patient also may have coplic spot. Coplic spot is uh, the white spot on the erythematous space on inner cheeks. Okay, you can see the picture below. Okay, next. Uh, next is rubella. Uh, rubella is caused by rubella virus. Uh, the, the rash is erythematous and maculopapular rash. It begins, uh, begins on the face, uh, spreads caudally to trunk and extremities, uh, same, same, uh, same as uh, measles. It is contagious. However, for rubella, uh, the rash spread more rapid and the rash is less prominent than measles. And the patient uh, will have rose colored spot on the soft palate. Okay, next. Uh, erythema infectiosum is caused by human parvovirus B19. Uh, the patient will have erythematous mala rash, or we call as slap cheek rash, uh, followed by reticulated lacy like rash on the trunk and uh, extremities. Okay, next. Uh, okay, roseola, roseola infantum is caused by a uh, human herpes virus 6. The rash is maculopapular, rose colored rash. It begins on neck, trunk, and spread to face and extremities. The patient uh, will have Nagoyama spot. Nagoyama spot is erythematous papules found on the soft palate and uvula. Okay, okay, next. Okay, next is Kawasaki disease. Uh, Kawasaki disease is uh, systemic vas vasculitis. The patient uh, may have uh, macular papular rash and polymorphous. Polymorphous is means that the, the rash is uh, vary in appearance and uh, the size is usually truncal. Okay, next. Okay, uh, this one is uh, the causes of vesicular 
or bullous, uh, uh, bullous and postular rash. So, siapa boleh bagi diagnosis of this patient? Okay, tak ada. Okay, okay. Chicken pox. Okay, so. Uh, next. Uh, for. Okay, the, the first causes is impetigo. In, impetigo is caused by staff or strep infection. The rash uh, begins as erythematous macules and then it becomes vesicular, postular or bullous. It will rupture, forming honey-colored crusted lesion. The site is usually uh, on the face, around nerves and mouth and also at, at the extremities. It is localized and highly contagious. Okay, next. Uh, next is chickenpox. It is caused by varicella zoster virus. Uh, it begins as a small red papules and then it become oval uh, teardrop vesicle on erythematous space and then it will ulcerate, crust and it will, it will heal. Uh, the rash uh, occurs in crops. It begins on trunk followed by head, face and extremities. Uh, patient will have intense uh, itching. Okay, next. next. Okay, next is a uh, hand foot mouth disease. It is caused by Kotsaki virus A type 16. It begins as uh, erythematous macule and then it becomes vesicle and rupture and forms superficial ulcers on palm and so it is non itchy. Uh, there is also painful sores in mouth and the patient will be uh, very con contagious uh, at the first week of illness. Okay, next. Next is scabies. Uh, it's caused by sar sarcoptis scabi. Uh, it is multiple. The rash is multiple, small erythematous, excoriated papules and vesicle, postule, uh, and uh, rarely it will form bullet. Uh, the patient will have severe itching. The classic site for scabies is interdigital folds, wrists, elbows, umbilical area, genital area, and feet. It is highly contagious. Okay, next. Okay, next is Steven Johnson syndrome. Steven Johnson syndrome is uh, the uh, severe erosion of uh, mucosal surface. It is most commonly triggered by medication. It is characterized by extensive necrosis and detachment of the epidermis. Uh, next. Okay, next is hemorrhage. Uh, rash. Okay, sama boleh bagi uh, ni, diagnosis. <laughs> Anyone? Kita okay, ada, kita okay, apalah. Ramli, uh, Ramli. Mana? <laughs> hmm, Abdullah Ramli. Apa? Only three choices kat situ. Mana satu? Hmm, tak ada pula Ramli. Tak ada. Apa lah ni. Nama je ada orang tak ada. Ali. Ali Gamun. Gamun ni apa ni? Nama ayah. Uh, Kenesh Loin Purpura. Okay. Ha. Dia memang not, not karakteristik kat lower limb kan. Tapi memang HSP lah tu. Hmm. Okay, usually karakteristik dia on, on lower limb. Yes. Kau yang ni menengok Koksemi ni? Rasa bukan, because that looks well. Alright. Okay. Okay, proceed. Next. Uh, next slide. Uh, eh. Eh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, the, the first causes of hemorrhagic rash is uh, menin meningeocosemia. Meningeocosemia is a uh, disseminating of meningococci in the blood uh, stream. It is uh, caused by Neisseria menin uh, meningitidis. Uh, the rash is a uh, non-blanching petechiae, most frequently on the trunk, uh, on the trunk and lower portion of the body. Petechiae can co coalesce uh, into large papery and ecchymotic lesion. Petiket will co correlate with the degree of the thrombocytopenia. Uh, next slide. 
Okay, uh, this one is Hanout Shondin Purpura. It is a uh, systematic vasculitis. Uh, the the purpura is uh, the the purpura is palpable without thrombocytopenia or co coagulopathy. Uh, it is symmetrical and distributed independent body areas such as ankle and lower legs and also on the buttocks. Okay, next. Okay, okay. Next is investigation. Okay, next. Uh, first, uh, we need to sign for full blood count. Is there is raised total white cell? Uh, it indicates infection and allergy. If there is low platelet, uh, it indicates hemorrhagic rash. Uh, next, we can sign for a uh, skin scraping at examine under light microscope for scabies and tinea. Uh, next, we send uh for specimen culture, which is a throat swab, blood urine and stool for PCR uh, or ELISA if we suspect of we suspect of uh, viral causes. We also can send throat swab uh, and blood for culture and sensitivity for acute rheumatic fever, scarlet fever and bacteremia. Uh, next is uh, anti-streptolysin O titer as sort for acute rheumatic fever uh, and allergic skin test to rule out atopic dermatitis, contact dermatitis and, and any allergic reaction. Okay, next. Uh, next is management. Okay, next. Okay. For management, uh, I divide into two, general treatment and specific treatment. For general treatment, we stabilize the patient and then we uh, give a supportive treatment uh, which we, we have to ensure the patient ha has good uh, hydration. And then for symptomatic treatment, we give antiparexia and antipurity uh, if the patient uh, have uh, itching. Uh, and then isolation uh, for infectious disease and notify for notifiable disease. Okay, for specific treatment, we need to uh, treat the underlying disease. And then uh, for for example, for viral, viral uh, mostly self-limiting, except for certain cases, we might need uh, antiviral. Okay, for bacteria, we give antibiotics. Uh, if the patient have immunological reaction, we give uh, intravenous immunoglobin and anti-inflammatory. Okay, next. Okay, okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Uh, okay, all right. So we did a few spot diagnosis, kan? Memang apa? Uh, don't forget about the rest too. First of all, you must, of course, history, kan, yeah? but, but when you describe the rest, it is important. Yeah? So there are apa, uh, different groups, kan? group of macular, group of uh, vesicular, and as well as uh, apa, some hemorrhagic rest, yeah? but active purpura. You must be sure which one uh, is it. Yeah? So once you the, apa, well described, oh, this one makul popular. So, there are list of differentials, kan? So, tengoklah which one yang most, apa namanya, most likely yang most hmm, uh, fit with the diagnosis. Yeah, we combine lah other part of the history, other findings, as uh, apa, maybe some investigation, yeah? So, please don't scrutinize, yeah? please don't overlap for example, dia yang macam yang first picture tadi, yang measles tadi, you diagnose chicken pox pula, differential. It is no, ya. Yeah. Kalau measles, ya yeah, differential, so maybe rubella, maybe rosella infantum, yang similar, makulu popular rash, ya. Yeah. Yang group of vesicular, yang maybe herpes, maybe ya yeah, chicken pox, maybe SFMD, so on and so forth. Okay, ya. Yeah. Um, and then age also important, ya. Yeah. Uh, kalau yang macam tadi yang first tadi kan measles kan kan um, Kawasaki still possible tapi kalau rheumatic fever ya not lah because rheumatic fever is usually in school age youngest pun around 5 year old itulah masih not even you pun ada even specialist consultant pun still asking for me to diagnose rheumatic fever in Three years old a child. Uh, ada saya no lah. Uh, three years saya bukan rheumatic fever. Three years cari diagnosis lain. Diagnosis lain ya. 
Okey, contoh macam tu ya. Hmm. Hotel saya. Um, contoh lagi yang 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 funny thing siapa? Ada patient come with uh, abdominal pain tapi tak ada purpura, you nak diagnose HSP pula. So nak diagnose HSP ya, you must be a purpura there. Even the purpura come earlier or maybe later, but there should be a purpura ya, yeah? maybe dah 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 apa ada purpura sudah di resolve or purpura still not uh, apa namanya come in but usually will be acute lah SSP itu maybe around uh, two or three days boleh come apa come after for example come after arthritis tapi usually purpura will come first <coughs> okay alright uh, So the other list of the differentials, yeah. As long as you get the history properly, get some other findings, and maybe need some investigation, we should come to final diagnosis. Yeah. All right. Um, any questions? No, tak ada. Alright. So, dah clear ya. With that, we close our session with us. Bikin harap dan asyar. Okay, so ya. Nearly maghrib. Ya. Apa? Uh, prepare for your maghrib prayer. Uh, thank you all. See you again. Kita ada session lain lagi tak? Semin topik seminar belum lah kan? Uh, teaching seminar next week. Ah, ada ya next week ya. Hari apa? Um, hari apa? Monday. Tak ingat. Tak apalah okay. nanti you text the text ya kalau apa juga sometimes yang macam ni kalau Selasa petang tu ada grand round so tak boleh buat on time. Kena kena after grand round baru buat. Okay. Um, on Wednesday. Wednesday pagi ke petang? Wednesday ah uh, 10 a.m pagi pula. Um, nanti tengoklah ke apa. If possible saya prefer petang kalau kalau Rabu tu. Uh, kalau yang petang siapa ada jadual yang petang tu kita tengok balik nanti kalau boleh switch switch lah. Tapi kalau uh, apa yang session petang dia nak conduct petang. Enggak uh, tak apalah saya conduct maybe ten. Okey, alright. Uh, session yang lain yang macam apa nama uh, procedure presentation you will be with your mentor kan apa lagi you ada long case presentation tak um ada week four ada ya ada lah nanti you prepare yang your previous case yang masa year three kan you masih simpan kan atau kalau boleh dapat from yang previous posting pun belum dapat case lagi belum jumpa patient lagi kan nanti kita discuss ya tapi apa uh, try to nanti long case tu try to discuss uh, more complex or apa chronic cases ya jangan discuss lagi pasal apa nama AGE ke apa lagi uh, fibril fit tak apa ya discuss lah yang simple simple case tu you dah well apa well non masa yerti dah you dah paham kan pergilang kronik lah macam CP ke talasemia ke asma Okay, alright. Okay, thank you all. Uh, see you again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam, thank you. Salam, thank you. Salam, thank you. Salam, thank you. Salam, thank you.